Welcome back guys, phase 2 of Season of Discovery is live. We are doing the level 40 guides for all classes, guides where we cover overall best in slot gear, updated professions, multiple talent specs, which runes to use, and some tips and tricks. Yesterday we covered the Priest, the Bringer of Darkness, but also the Invoker of Light. Today you guys voted in large numbers for the Hunter, the Master of Ranged Combat, the Tamer of Wild Beasts, and lately the leader of melee DPS. There is also an updated armory link in the pinned comment if any changes or mistakes arise. If you like the series, smash like, and with that being said, let's get right into it, shall we? For the Hunter, we're going to cover four specs today, two for ranged and two for melee. We're gonna start with the best in slot for the range, and that's gonna be the glowing neural linked helmet, which recently got modified, 14 strength has been removed to, from it, but three weapon damage has been applied the proc still remains there, the on-use effect, 10 uh, seconds with 20% attack speed. For the necklace, the No More Peace Officer Torque, although there's a good argument that we might be using the Agility Necklace from Warson Gulch, we're gonna talk about more when we get to the rune section. For the shoulders, the Trog Slayer Shoulders, for the Cloak, Parachute Cloak, as you can see, we're keeping a trend with a lot of agility. And for the chest, we have an option between agility this is if we're gonna use the new rune expose weakness which increases our at range attack power by 40 percent based of our agility and then we go for the electromantic set if we play a different spec such as beast mastery with uh maybe steady shot we're gonna talk more when we get there for the bracers the experimental aim stabilizers 7 agility 22 attack power and for the polearm we have 15 agility 9 stamina 15 intellect the gyromatic macro adjuster for the gloves, the gloves of Holy Might, 20% attack power, 1% crit, I think they're going to be best in slot. However, there's another pair of nice male uh, gloves called Fingers of Arcane Accuracy, which do have agility, stamina, intellect, and 1% hit, hit, not crit. For the belt, the engineering belt, but if you don't have engineering, you can go for Dark Vision Girdle, which has 24 attack power, 1% hit, 4 intellect, if you're playing a spec without the agility rune. And then you can go for the Skull Duggery, waistband if you're playing uh, an agility build but also uh, one with the flanking strike which is melee weaving this is going to be pretty good as well for the pants the new trip runner Duggaris from a uh, nomad quest 21 agility 5 strength 8 stamina for boots the swamp walker boots 13 agility 6 stamina and then we went for agility rings the one from zulfarak 13 agility 5 stamina and the ring of the underwood which is 10 agility 3 stamina to strength. There's also a green ring with 10 agility, which you can find at level 40. That's going to be just fine as well. Avenger Void Pearl with Gyromatic Experiment 420B, 36 attack power, but also some attack speed. And for the weapon, the Thermaplug Custom Blaster, uh, the epic gun from Nomar. It has 54 with 100 damage. That's similar to the bow from Maraudon. It's going to be really cool. It's going to work great on range specs. Keep in mind that their sets are not in their final form. The Electromantic set might receive some agility, so things might change. We already saw some changes on the helmets from Blacksmith, from Letterworking. Who knows what we'll see on the sets in the future. Now let's move to the first talent spec, which is going to be the Marksmanship spec. 5 points to reduce the mana cost of your shots and stings by 10%. Into 5% critical strike. Into aimed shot with 3 out of 3 Hawkeye into mortal shots which increases your range weapon critical strike damage bonus by 30 percent those gun critical strikes are about to be so huge and now we move into multi-shot 15 percent damage to multi-shot probably in our rotation we'll still use multi-shot rank one because of mana issues but if we use the electromantic set there's an option you get mana back whenever you a five percent hit and there's going to be another rune that we're going to talk about it so we might be using a full rank of multi-shot Range weapon specialization, 5% extra damage into 50 attack power from uh, True Shot Aura. Obviously the Scatter Shot, which is nice to have. Pretty basic uh, talent spec for marksmanship, but now we move into the runes. So Heart of the Lion is kind of a no-brainer, but if you have a Hunter with Heart of the Lion in your group, you can go for potentially Lone Wolf, uh, which is 30% extra damage. The rune got bath buffed to 30%, I think. That's huge as well, but also you can go for Master Marksman, which increases the critical strike by 5%, and also reduces the mana cost of all, all your shots and abilities by 25. Heart of the Lion we keep here. Flanking Strike if you do melee weave, or Sniper Training if you're lazy. You just want to sit in one place in DPS. 
the good thing is still probably going to be flanking strike. Uh, Chimera shot. Chimera shot 100% weapon damage. It's going to scale with a new gun perfectly. I wish you luck if you're playing a hunter to obtain the gun. If you're playing a ranged hunter. And uh, I think this is probably going to be the best spec for hunter. Marksmanship. Into the waste rune, which your melee and range criticals increase your attack power by 40% of your current agility for 7 seconds. So if you crit every 7 seconds, you can maintain this uh, attack power buff for a lot of time. At level 40, you're going to have probably around 300 agility. 40% out of that is close to 150. It, it, 150 attack power. That's going to be huge. So exposed weakness is going to be huge. And also gearing towards agility is going to be huge. Moving to the last rune, to the foot rune. When your pet scores a critical hit with a special ability, you instantly regenerate 5% of your maximum mana. So each time the pet scores a critical hit, you get 5% mana. And if you use the Electromantic set, you're going to get 5% more mana. So you might be able to spam things like uh, max rank of multi-shot and so on. Trap Launcher is a new rune that can be very good for hunters, especially in their burst. Traps can now be used in combat and can be placed at any location that you want. Uh, the Frost and Fire ones have separate, separate cooldowns. It's going to be interesting. If you need more mana, you're going to use the invigoration rune and if you want to burst more damage you're going to use the trap launcher now let's move to the second range spec which is going to be a beast mastery range spec for the ranged beast mastery spec five out of five improved aspect of the hawk 30 percent attack speed for 12 seconds huge three out of five endurance training extra health for the pet so he would stay alive improved revive pet so in case it dies we can resurrect it uh, at a low cost and really fast unleashed fury 20% damage to your pet, which is huge, into 15% critical strike chance of your pet, into 100% chance to gain 30% attack speed increased for 8 seconds after dealing a critical strike. Your pet will get 30% attack speed after a critical strike. This is uh, for 8 seconds. This is huge as well. 20% increased focus regeneration, bestial discipline, which increases your focus regeneration of your pet by 20%. And then we have Intimidation into Bestial Rat. And Intimidation can be used as a taunt or a stun in raid if you want to tank a bit with a pet. And Bestial Rat is just going to do 50% additional damage for 18 seconds. Your pet is going to be doing 50% additional damage for 18 seconds. Moving to the runes, Heart of the Lion might still be the good choice because it provides stats for all of the raid and for you double. But there's a good argument that now Cobra Strikes might be useful, especially in this situation when you're playing Beast Mastery. Because we have a, a later run called Steady Shot. We're going to get into that a bit later. But so far, Heart of the Lion has just benefits the entire raid. It's really hard to say pass. For the leg run, now we have more options. Sniper training if you just want to play the lazy way the hunter and just enjoy a raid by spamming in one position some abilities, waiting for your loot. And then we have the kill command, which becomes a bit more beneficial with the improved pet with Bestial Rat. A claw and bite for by 60% increased damage for 30 seconds. And each claw or bite done by the pet reduces damage by 20%. I think the cooldown is quite short on kill command. And you can use it multiple times per fight. With the pet doing more damage, it does make a lot of sense. However, the classic melee weaving hunter, which is still going to be probably the best thing, is going to be flanking strike. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to play it, but I think I'm going to try to focus playing more pet oriented. Uh, hand rune, we went for beast mastery. We don't get chimera shot because beast mastery, 20% extra damage to pet. Focus regeneration by 50%. Now, this scales with uh, Unleashed Fury, it scales with Ferocity, it scales with Frenzy, it scales with Bestial Discipline, and it scales with Bestial Rat. Beast Mastery Rune just got way more benefits when it comes compared to Phase 1, for example. I think it's going to be great synergy between talents in this rune. And for the Waste Rune, I went for Steady Shot. And the reason why I went for Steady Shot here over the Exposed Weakness is because this gives us a macro, Steady Rotation. It's probably not going to cost a lot of mana since it does only 60% weapon damage. But if you have the epic gun, this can do a lot of damage because you do one auto shot, one steady shot, one auto shot, one steady shot. It might even become a perma spam. And then uh, you can use the chest rune for the pet uh, critical strikes and instead of heart of the lion. And also this spec could also work with exposed weakness, which is going to be nice. And I think there's a lot of potential, but first we have to test and see how all of this goes. And for the foot rune, when your pet scores a critical hit with a special ability, you instantly regenerate 5% of your maximum mana. Combine this with the electromagnetic set uh, bonus, another 5% mana. You're probably going to have a lot of mana as a hunter to keep on spamming spells, which is going to be a lot of DPS. 
Let me know how you feel about the range hunter so far. Let me know if you would play it any different. And with that being said, let's move to the melee hunter and see how everything changes there. For the melee bastion slot hunter, a lot of items will be the same. Same leather helmet. We have plus 3 weapon damage now on it and 14 agility. They remove the strength. The Nomer 16 attack power, 1% crit necklace. The Trog Slayer shoulders, the same. The Drape of Dismantling has strength and agility, which buffs our overall melee damage. Electromantic set, stamina, intellect, crit attack power, but the set bonus on 3 pieces have a 5% chance to restore 100 mana. Any attacks. That's going to be probably huge. In phase 1, I had mana issues, especially especially on long fights such as Akumai. We'll see how the melee hunters will do in phase 2. Forest Talker Bracers, 14 agility, 8 strength. If you don't have ones, get the one with 7 agility, 22 attack power. And for the weapons, it seems like the Feast weapons are going to be best as well for the hunter. He does have a 260 speed on the main hand, epic 34 damage per second. And the off hand has a 280 speed, but damage uh, of a uh, Raptor Strike works different right now. It Basically, a slow off hand would do great for hunters. Moving to the glove, the Machinist gloves, stamina, agility, attack power when fighting in mechanical units, and also heat. I think it was strength and agility. They changed it? Maybe they changed it. Uh, Skullduggery waistband, strength, agility, electromantic pants and electromantic boots, and the set overall is focused on attack power, crit, and hit. So I think it's going to be pretty nice. The Legionnaire band, 8 strength, 8 agility, into the hypercharged gear of devastation, 7 strength, 8 agility, 10 stamina. The Void Pearl and the Gyromatic Experiment 420B will give us 36 attack power. And for the bow will be the new Monolithic Bow, which is a trash bow from Uldaman. It's probably going to be too expensive, so just get the new bow, one with agility or attack power. And uh, you just need it for stats mostly. For the first melee spec, we went for a hybrid between Beast Mastery and Survival. We went all the way down into Beast Mastery until Intimidation. We have BCL Discipline, which gives our focus regeneration by 20%. We have a 15% chance to critical strike with your pet. We have the 20% uh, damage done by our pets. And also we have some extra abilities to make our pet stronger in case we need it for tanking or off tanking or in case we just grind overall in the world. Then we move into the survival tree with three humanoid slaying, two monsters slaying and two out of two savage strikes, which increases the critical strike chance of raptor strike and mongoose bite by 20%. This is huge for melee. You, you must have this one. You cannot play melee hunter without... Uh, this talent for the runes we have heart of the lion 20 percent stats for you and 10 percent for the pet it's just huge you get strength you get agility you get intellect everything is good for melee here we have flanking strike which is great and increases the damage of our raptor strike creates great synergy there and then we have beast mastery rune which creates great synergy with our pet abilities at level 40. Moving to the waste rune, we have the melee specialist where the raptor strike rune cooldown is reduced to 3 seconds and is now instant. Mongoose bite cooldown removed entirely and raptor strike has a 30% chance on each attack not to trigger its cooldown. Wow, so this one melee specialist works really great with flanking strike. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to translate into actual gameplay, but there are chances that the melee hunter might become better than rogues and warriors. I know I'm high on copium, but hey... At least I have some hope for melee hunters this patch. And then we move into the dual wield specialization. Increases the damage done by your offhand weapon by 50%. Causes your raptor strike to strike with both weapons when you are dual wielding. And raptor strike now deals 30% increased damage when you are wielding two weapons of the same time. So that's why we had to have uh, two fists and also a slow uh, offhand as well. Increased damage. I don't know man but this looks really powerful and really exciting to try. This is the first spec, but I think the second one might be better. So let's move to the second spec. For the second melee spec, we went full survival, which gives the hunter a small chance that he might be able to tank a bit as well. Three monster slaying, three humanoid slaying, two parry into two savage strikes, the most important talent spec here. Five out of five survivalists, which gives 10% increased health into deterrence, which you have a nice cooldown, which allows you to dodge and parry into counterattack. This becomes nice when uh, you're actually doing the 2 into 2 improved feign death into 3 out of 3 sure footed which is going to be 3% hit and 3% crit from killer instinct. Those are the nice flat values that you get from this spec. And then we have 15% agility lightning reflexes. It's going to give us more crit and more attack power as well. We have wyvern sting which it's situational. You can use it in dungeons or pvp. But then we move into the runes and this is where it becomes interesting. 
And for the chest rune, we now we have Lone Wolf, which increases the damage you deal by 30% with all attacks while you don't have an active pet, which is quite great because now you can be a full melee DPS just like the Warriors and just like the Rogues. Moving into the leg rune, the flanking strike must have. And then we move into the hand rune, which we don't have to use Beastmaster anymore. And now we can choose Carve, a sweeping attack that strikes all enemies in front of you for 50% weapon damage, which also provides some really nice AoE. And then we move into the waist and foot runes, and which are melee specialists and dual wield weapon spec, like we talked on the previous melee spec. This is looking so great. Let me know which specs out of the four we discussed today intrigues you the most. Now let's move into the next bit. Hunters are getting some really nice spells for phase 2, which is going to propel them towards the top of the DPS charts. The first thing we see here at the level 26, we're going to get Rapid Fire. Increases the range attack speed by 40% for 15 seconds. It's going to be huge. Another thing is Feign Dead, which is overlooked, but it's going to allow you to pump in from the beginning. And if you pull threat, you're going to be able to reset. Multishot is going to be rank 2, which is not going to be that great. But at the same time, a lot of people will probably use still Multishot rank 1 in their rotation. Aspect of the Hawk is going to give 70 range attack power, but at the same time at level 40 you get a new rank of Hunter's Mark, which is going to be an extra 75 attack power. Combine that with True Shot Aura, it's going to be mind-blowing. But don't worry, melee Hunters get also something, they get a new rank of Raptor Strike. Raptor Strike rank 6, which is going to give 80 additional damage to your melee attacks. There's a new rank of Volley, which uh, costs 350 mana. It's probably going to be useless unless Blizzard transforms it into something else. Hunter, it's looking great so far. I'm really curious to see how it's going to perform based on all the information we got so far. If you're looking to get into Season of Discovery or return to Wrath of the Lich King, level some new alts and so on, I highly recommend getting Resid XP add-on. The add-on is free with all its features and the guides are available up to level 20, making your leveling fast but also efficient since now it incorporates rune guides. Is this add-on a necessity? Not necessarily. But if efficiency is your goal, Resid XP delivers. It has the potential to accelerate your leveling speed by 30 to 100%, ultimately saving you valuable slash playtime that could be better spent elsewhere. Personally, I also use it to quest for gold at max level in each phase because it gives me a good route to follow for maximum gold per hour. And if by any chance in the future you think about making an upgrade to a full version, Use my code FROSADAMUS for 5% off, links in the description down below. Hope you enjoyed the video guys, if you did, smash like, and given the fact that you're still watching the video, you might be interested in my second YouTube channel, FROSADAMUS TV. There's going to be a link right here on the screen, and you can easily find it in the description of the video, right under the Twitch link. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy phase 2, and may you be blessed by the gods of RNG. Until next time, Stay frosty. Bye-bye.